After two years of early access, the Planet Crafter is now fully released. I tried the demo for the game before early access release and was not impressed enough to dive in for for early access. Now that this left early access and has garnered 96% positive reviews on Steam, I decided to give it a try. This will be my first impressions of the game and will provide a brief overview of the gameplay mechanics. In the Planet Crafter, you're going to be dropped onto an inhospitable planet and you're going to be tasked with revitalizing it to make it habitable. So you're going to drop down and right off the start, you're going to be in this little pod here. You're going to get some message basically going to tell you kind of what's going on. You're also going to be giving some, given some tasks to craft some things. So the first goal is to reach 175,000 TI. And basically how you do that is you just start placing down different objects as in like there's, you can place down when you build your base, you put, place the wind turbines. There's also going to be drills you can place down. There's going to be various objects that you unlock as you play through the game. And each of those will increase the amount of terraform, the, the terraformation index, which is in the top right corner. And the terraformation index, as that goes up, you'll also unlock blueprints for crafting more and better things. And in the world, basically, the reason I kind of was like put off by this when I first tried it was because it kind of seemed, it almost to me felt like it was like kind of like an asset flip because it was like, here's a world and there's just a bunch of like colorful rocks out in the world. However, after playing it for a couple hours, I was kind of hooked and I've just, I kind of want to play it some more. So what you're seeing here is that I'm out in the world and there are just various resources all over the place. So there's cobalt, ice, there's iron, there's magnesium, there's titanium. There's all these different resources. Each of them is going to allow you to craft some different things. And like other survival games that are kind of like this, I would say the games that this is most similar to would be Subnautica and Breathage. In both those games, you have to manage your oxygen. In the Planet Crafter, the biggest limiting factor is going to be in the most danger, at least early on so far, has been managing my oxygen. So basically, you have to return back to your little pod here until you build your base. When you build a base, you can go inside of it. And one thing I ended up doing later on was when I found some uh, points of interest that were pretty far away, rather than crafting a bunch of oxygen uh, like oxygen tanks that would replenish my oxygen, I ended up just building like a tiny little base out near those places so I could just gather all the resources out of it, go back out there and replenish my oxygen. That seemed to be the best. That's a similar strategy that I know many people use in Subnautica. Not sure about Breathage, but definitely in Subnautica. So if you played either one of those games, you'll probably have an idea of what this game has in store for you. So far in my couple of hours of playing, and I believe this is going to be the case, at least I think it's the case all the way through the game, there's not really any combat. It's just like there's not really much combat in Subnautica. I think there's a little bit of combat in Subnautica. I don't remember there being any combat in Breathage, and I played mostly through that game. But basically here, you're going to be going out and looking for various resources. So the, the resources that are right here at the start, they're going to be very plentiful and all over the place. They're going to get you to craft, help you craft like the basic things. You need to craft like a higher level oxygen tank, a bigger backpack to carry more resources, as well as the tools to help you build and deconstruct bases. And then you'll be tasked with crafting some other stuff, which will mean you're going to need to go further out. There are points of interest that are scattered around the map. The points of interest, the first first two that I ran into were looked like they were crashed spaceships, and each one of them had different uh, resources in it that were gonna that will allow me to craft more uh, more things. And there also would be requiring like disassembling things. So in the first one I found there, uh, there were actually things that I was not able to completely disassemble using the tier one, dis, uh, the, the disassembler tool here, the deconstructing tool. So I will have to go back to that point of interest later. I also found an ice cave that said that the ice would melt once the temperature on the planet reached a certain level. So that'll be another reason to go back there. But overall, like I said, the first time I played this, it just didn't, it kind of seemed like, what is the point of this? But now after having played it and having played those other two games, I can kind of see why people like this game. It feels like it's more of, I won't say it's like a relaxing, like it's not a fully relaxing game where you can just kind of sit back and not really have to worry about anything because you will be, it will, there will be some tense moments on whether or not you're going to get back before your oxygen runs out. Now, up to this point, I have not let, allowed my oxygen to hit completely like down to zero. So I don't know if that's an instant death. I think more likely than not, my health will probably tick down. So you also do have to manage your health and you have to manage your thirst. The health is replenished by food packs. You get a bunch of food packs to start off. So hunger should managing your health should not be a big deal. There is fall damage. I did jump off of a pretty tall cliff and took some fall damage, but it's pretty generous in the fall damage because I think there's like low, I mean, there must be low gravity or something because you can fall a pretty decent distance without taking any damage. The water can be replenished by just taking the the ice and turning it into water bottles. So that's really not going to be much of a big deal either. And then later on, you'll be able to unlock the ability to grow your own food, which will then allow you to just kind of fully sustain yourself. I Again, I think this is probably going to be similar to Subnautica, where in Subnautica, once 
once I ended up getting the little trees that let me plant the, uh, the, the, the tree that I could plant and get, get the fruit off of that replenished like the thirst and everything like that and hunger, it just felt like that was like hunger and thirst were not really much of a challenge at that point. I kind of feel like there'll probably be a point in this game where that happens where you won't really have to be worrying about it. But I think there's other envi there's going to be other environmental hazards. Uh, right now, the first biome that I started off in, there are dust storms. They don't seem to do any damage. They just kind of make it hard to see. Uh, it does be it does get dark at nighttime. You can place a bed. Unfortunately, the bed does not let you skip night. But the nighttime seems to pr be pretty short. There are plenty of other biomes in the game. I know there's at least a cold and a hot biome. I have not made it to those just yet, but so far, kind of my my pl by playing through it, I've managed to upgrade my backpack a couple of times. I've upgraded my oxygen tank. I have crafted all the tools that I'll need at the beginning: the constructor, the deconstructor, the light for being able to see in dark areas. I built a pretty decent sized base. Now, originally, I built the base right by the start where you start. I ended up deciding to move it because I know later on, having played in the demo, that you'll end up it'll end up creating like water and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to be like a little bit of a high ground. I also wanted a much flatter place. So I ended up did moving my base over there. And what I've found is what I'm going to probably be doing is setting up a central base at that one location. And then the plan is going to be to, as I go out and discover POI, set up like a one or two room base at those locations, putting some chests in there. That way I can go in, clear out the entire POI, get all the resources out, and then take them back to my original base. I think most likely what's going to happen is it's probably going to make sense to set up like different outposts i don't know how big the world is yet because i have honestly like i said when i played the demo i only played for a couple of hours and i've only played for a couple of hours now in the 1.0 release but so far i am enjoying the game i do plan on probably playing it for i don't i i, I plan on trying to finish the game we'll see how it goes i'll definitely if i do finish the game i will end up doing like a full review video where i kind of go in detail on like all the systems that are in the game i will say that so far i have enjoyed it it's kind of it's better than i was expecting it to be I wasn't really expecting much from it from having played the demo, but like I said, now I can see the appeal to anybody who's enjoyed playing like Subnautica or other survival games like that. I'm curious to see what's been added since I played the demo way back when. There's been, I think, seven major updates in the two years of early access, and then, of course, the big update for 1.0. The uh, There's a, lot, a ton of stuff to unlock, and the unlocks, like I said, are from uh, increasing the, terra, the Terraformation Index. The Planet Crafter is currently available on PC via Steam. It's going to be on sale for the first two weeks, so from April 10th to April 24th. It's going to be 30% off, so you can grab it for just under $17. Honestly, I think you'll get more than your money's worth out of it just from seeing if you play through the entire game. there's a, Like I said, there's a lot of stuff to unlock. I've been enjoying it so far. For the full release, they also added co-op, so you can play with 1 to 10 players in co-op. They also added some animals to the game, so I guess it'll be interesting to see what they do. I'm sure they're probably going to be uh they're not going to be hard they're not going to be a hostile towards you i don't believe i think they're going to be more used for actually like probably helping you out around your base and stuff like that so i'll be curious to see how that's going to be so anyway let me know in the comments down below if you're going to be checking out the planet crafter like i said i'm going to put a bunch more time into it and if i think it's worthwhile i will do a full review once i have finished the game if you found this video helpful make sure to hit the like button thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video